I'm here. Let's start now. <laughs> hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Jerry. And Dan. Here right. with another episode of Hooked on Headwaters. Today we are at a special location at the Davis House Inn. Dave's going to do a little pan around. We'll get you some more pictures a little bit later on in the video, but definitely hang around to check those out. For those of you who have not seen what the place that you hear us talk about all the time. Yep. Yep. If you haven't checked it out, this place is awesome. You can probably see through that the river is that way. We're going to talk a little bit about the intercoastal behind us here a little bit later. So definitely want to hear about that because that pertains to something Dave does, which is super cool. So hang on for that. So we're going to go ahead and do our usual. I mean, we're talking about Davis House in now. So hey, if you're looking for a place to stay, make sure you come on down and uh, stay here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right into things. To set today's episode, we're going to I'm going to kind of outline them. Uh, what we're going to be doing we're going to be talking to dan a little bit about this last week in review a man over here had the week off had some other stuff he was doing so um he's going to be coming in with some really killer information when it's regarding bass spawning habit just like the scientist here that's, that's what we got <laughs> dr jerry is going to be talking about the bass whisperer that's right <laughs> and then dan's going to jump back and cover a uh, little bit about flipping and uh, fishing and, and how effective that's going to be here coming up into this part of the year dave will be back with some other really cool information so we're going to want to make sure you hang on for that in between that hey like subscribe thumbs up do all the things to help the algorithm yep. help keep us going here and uh let's kick this thing off so we can review. I'm going. We, Bye, Dave. The <laughs> it's a long way. <laughs> so th this past week, I had a really good week. I had uh, uh, <clears throat> some really good days. Saturday was actually really fantastic. <clears throat> I had a uh, guy, Bill, from Montana, fish with two days. And uh, on Thursday, we, we did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Nothing big, you know, three and a half pounds. Uh, was about our biggest. We probably caught 25 fish. Right. We fished again on Saturday and fished areas we did not fish the day before, and uh, we struggled a little bit. And I, you know, headwaters. It's to me is you you find places that just the fish are more active. Now I will say that uh, Saturday I had two separate trips on Saturday that were all shiners, and we pounded them on shiners. So the shiner bites going off. Um, <clears throat> So I'm sure Jerry can attest to that too. With his, he told me he was out and he really whacked them good over at Keenansville, I believe he said. Thursday. Thursday. So the shiner bite's going well, um, but we did catch some on artificial. Uh, we actually did a, a build fish to drop shot quite a bit and caught a lot of fish on a drop shot. And it's something I don't do much. So I learned a bit from him. I know how to drop shot. It's just not something that I do uh, very often. Side note, we will be bringing you a drop shot specific video, Dave and I here, coming up in cool. the near future. So be on the lookout for that because we're going to show you how to tear them up with those drop shots. Mm -hmm. And special kind of bait. Yep. So also water temperature wise, it's been, you get out this past week, it was pretty chilly in the morning. Uh, I get out there, the, the water temperature would be between 64. You know, later in the day, it might get up to 68 or so. Um, food for thought guys the afternoon bite that I found is better right now that doesn't mean you're not going to catch him in the morning just if you're there just stay if you have time stay till right before dark right. on Saturday we smashed them in the afternoon mm -hmm. nothing big again but multiple fish in the three to five pound range nice so we basically used up all our shiners right. our good lively shiners anyway and uh, we had a we had a really good time really yeah, good time good, good. Mm -hmm. yeah and days are going to be like that i mean you're going to have some days that are a little bit tougher and then you have some oh, days yeah. that are just home runs and that's just fishing that's the mm -hmm. way it is you know, I know mm -hmm. um, you know as fishermen sometimes the tails can get pretty big oh yeah they right? get real you know, big they get real big you know 100 fish days and all you know, let's be real here yeah fishing yeah. is fishing days are yeah. better than others and we like you know that's what we do we keep it real here give you the breakdown and you know mm -hmm. you guys both have fished here forever so you know we're, we're talking those kind of numbers that's what it is but yeah. great time of year coming into shiner bite definitely mm -hmm. mr mr shiner here i think he's if i asked jerry right now if he has shiner in his pocket he probably has three <clears throat> Um, I'm saving them. That's just the way he is. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't smell him, so he probably doesn't have that no, right does. now. So anyway, I, right. don't, I don't go far without one, that's um, for sure. With, uh, I want to give you an update on uh, Three Forks. I know we've been getting a lot of questions asking about can you navigate around Three Forks. It was out the other day. Um, we're talking to a fellow. I know 
we personally, I personally ran my wife, we ran the West Bank and down around and all that was clear and everything was good. We came back, we talked to a guy at the ramp who was fishing what I'm gonna call Lake One because if you run all the way to the end, you jump into 40 or the East-West Canal, whichever you used to call it. You go down to the east side across from the shelter, you go through the rock piles and then you're into that first lake. That lake was accessible. The, these guys tore them up, pulled like 55 fish out of there using speed worms, had a great time. As far as can you get into two, three, four, five, and six, don't know, but we're gonna find that out hopefully this weekend. Um, we're gonna make a run out there if, it, if everything works out and um, give you a full report on three forks. So be looking for that coming up uh, as well. We'll do that as a separate video in, uh, in an update. So there we go on that. So those are kind of uh, where we're at update wise. Um, we're gonna go ahead at this time and uh, go to the professor. <sighs> professor Jerry, we're talking about coming into spawning season. I know we touched on this last week a little bit, but let's break this down for the people that, you know, you may have fished all your life, but really not understand what the process is. You know, who's making the beds, you know? How long are they on there? What's the water temperature? What are you looking for? What triggers them? The whole nine yards, you know, that kind of thing. So where do you want to go with that? So, and you know, Dan, jump in here. If, if I say something that's kind of off or something, or you got something to add. Okay. <clears throat> The spawn's gonna start, start, really start in January. That's when you're gonna see, that's when the fish are gonna start coming in and they're, I mean, they're gonna be in there and they're gonna be concentrated. Uh, your bucks come in first. They, okay. they come in. Um, here's a lot different than up north where, you know, up north, you know, you might have the back of creeks and places like that and that fish may swim a mile to get to a place to where, you know, he's gonna make a bed and she'll, and she'll come in and follow right after that. These so fish, the males are coming in and making the, the bucks bed. are going to come in and make the beds and then the feet once that buck comes in and makes that bed the female's not far behind him i mean yeah. she's in that area yeah. and she will feed up as much as she can before she lays i mean and that's just <clears throat> she's pregnant i mean you know she's wanting she's wanting to lay healthy eggs so she's going to feed up you know while he's on that bed making that bed and then once she chooses that bed She'll come in and she'll lay those eggs and what you'll see is, is you'll see her rocking back and forth. She'll be rocking and he'll actually be hitting her in the side. The, the, the buck bass will be hitting her trying to dislodge them eggs to, to get them eggs to come out. Okay. But once she, once she lays them eggs, she's leaving that bed and she's going to move around but she'll still be in that area. Um, the bucks are going to start coming in. There's, some are coming in now but they're really going to start coming in in January and like I was saying earlier is up north you know these fish may swim a mile mm -hmm. to get to their bedding area where here they may swim a hundred yards okay i mean yep. they're going to bed here they're going to bed in canals and they're going to bed in these big flats and at one time you'll have a, you'll have pre-spawn fish post-spawn fish and spawning fish all three at the same area at the same time and i mean and they if you find one if you find one fish if you hit one fish you're in the maternity ward right there i mean okay. them fish are there and you'll catch numbers of them the biggest so, so they key on sorry to interrupt but they, but they so they key in on certain areas the bottom right the you want that right, shell bottom so. sand bottom got that shell got that rock got that sand bottom he'll come in he'll fan it out he'll make the bed she'll come in she'll lay the egg she'll leave the bed so if it's good enough for one they're that's exactly area. right they're going to be go they're going to be in there and the best thing i can say as far as fishing them is you know you don't want to get in there and idle in and out of them canals and in zigzag in and out of it put your power pole down and fan cast 360 degrees the more you run over top of them fish the harder they're going to become to catch yeah mm -hmm. um water temperature that's everything if the water temperature is too low they will not hatch if the water temperature is too high they will not hatch once she lays them eggs depending on the water temperature they can hatch as soon as two days Wow, 10 okay. days i mean within 10 days those eggs are going to hatch and he is the one who sits there and he's going to watch them he's going to stay on them so you know if you see beds and you see those buck fish in there those females even if they laid they are still in that area mm -hmm. and um it's a five month process here i mean you know i've seen fish in july june still still you know right. i mean so when they start in january you're going to have all of february march april may and then you know like i said up until june they can still be there so but the best way to catch them artificial i would say would be punching mats you know punching mats or throwing a swim jig 
mm -hmm. throwing uh, you know something like that and just cast on them and cast on them but the biggest thing is you just don't want to be in there running them over back and forth back and forth back right. and forth back and forth because they will get hard to catch the one thing that we do have with our fish is they do gather in big numbers and they will be bedded up all over the place in one area but we have sissy fish they do not like cold fronts and they will come off of that bed they will come off the bedding area when it gets cold until it warms back up and then they'll come back in there they will not stay in there if it's cold and um it just shuts them down completely okay. so if you have a major cold front come in or something like that in january you're going to have to give them a few days to get right again for sure gotcha. and um i mean you can just go on and on and on about them sure. but yeah really good really good information and i'm if you it, all right if you just listen to the professor here <laughs> go through <laughs> what he was talking about. If you, if you didn't know some of this information, comment below. Let us know. Hey, this is new info to me because some of this I didn't know. You know, I mean, I fish. I'm out there on the lake, but I don't know it all. And there was some cool stuff in there that I picked up. So comment below. Um, you know, hey, I just learned X, Y, Z. And if they're rolling on the bed, if a female is in there rolling around on the bed, it's almost impossible to catch her while she's doing that. Yeah. She's not, she's, I mean, it's very, di very difficult to catch. Eat. Yeah, so, and another thing with them is, is just my personal opinion is take a picture, take a measurement, and have a replica made. Do not take those breeding fish. Oh, yeah. Do not take those breeding females. Leave them alone. That's, that's our future. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And thanks a lot, dude. That was yep. awesome. You got anything you want to add to that, Dan? Uh, no, you know, locating these the the bedding areas, and it's a, there's a lot of things that you can catch. Of, I've caught fish on a crankbait, visual, you know, sight fishing, pitched a crankbait in there, and it triggered them. Okay. Well, meanwhile, I'd thrown a crawl in there like the last ten boats just did, and I just did something different. So I'm not saying go throw crankbaits, but what I'm saying is, is there's a myriad of baits. Uh, it's getting it in front of them, like Jerry says. Don't run them over. Don't run over them with your boat. They'll, you'll push them off the beds. They'll get spooky, and you you're not going to catch them. If you roll up on a bed, you see a fish on it, you want to try to catch. Back off. If the fish pushes off pushes off the bed, come back. You know, fish down the bank a little ways and, and come back. Uh, location wise, uh, bottom content like Jerry's saying, shell or sand. Typically, they won't mu uh, spawn on, on, a, on, on a muddy, muddy bottom. bottom. So, and you're not always going to see them beds. Don't think, oh, I don't see no beds. There's the, a lot of them beds you can't see them. Right. If you're you not going to. That's exactly. You're yeah. not going to see them fish. Yeah. So for <laughs> a lot of you uh, guys from up north that you just don't have grass, we it's, it's everywhere here. Yes. There's so much yeah. it can be hard to pick it out. So think about water depth. Anywhere between two and five foot, depending on the clarity. Uh, I saw some beds last year in headwaters in, in about six foot, mm -hmm. but you know, I had to be on top of it to actually mm -hmm. see right. that the, the beds were there because it's just kind of a darker bottom. Yep. Uh, but a way to visually see it from a distance to, to go things to check are like cattails. Yes. Cattails, clumps of lily pads, man, isolated lily pads, yes. isolated. Sawgrass. Uh, yeah, what you call sawgrass, I call them cattails. Yes, same uh, thing, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, isolated, isolated stuff can be really good too, but okay. you gotta think bottom content. What is the bottom content? Is it mud? Avoid it if you're looking for spawning fish, but, but sandy or shell, rock bottom, they'll spawn on that kind of stuff. And also, and also, if you know that if you know that the fish are there just if you know that the fish are bedding in that area i mean if you're looking over here at 25 yards away and it's just sand bottom over here on, on the bank and you know that it's coming out into a canal and you know that sand bottom's up on that flat but you're not getting anything on that flat and that flat may be like dan was saying two to five feet but then it drops off into a 10 foot ledge fish that ledge yeah because them fish will be well, they'll be moving up and down mm -hmm. that ledge feeding sure. they like and then they they'll like come up on that bed water. and then they'll get back in mm -hmm. that deeper water so you just fish that ledge as well yeah yeah so. and you can see a lot of that visually you can actually see the sandy spot on the bottom now yep. one thing we do have that you guys are hopefully taking care of for us is the doggone tilapia yes so the, the uh, tilapia will have beds the same time that the bass do. Mm -hmm. But a way to identify that it's a tilapia bed and it's not worth fishing is it's a very deep bowl mm -hmm. shape of a bed. Bass beds are gonna be flatter, more like a plate. 
Yes. But a, but a, a, a tilapia bed is going to be deep like a bowl. You can roll up on it and see. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll see we have some huge tilapia. Well, it's like here. semi tires laying there. Yeah, they're, they're big. just big, huge they're beds. Big. So that's not Which a bass a, bed. That's a tilapia know, bed. Coming into the spawn is a great time for guys to come out with you, with you and go bow fishing. Yeah, of course you're going to show them. Okay, that's a bass. You don't shoot that. Right. That's a tilapia. <laughs> yes. But it's a great time because usually the water's nice and clear. Mm -hmm. The fish are hanging around those because they'll spawn too. Yeah. Which they'll tilapia. They're a, a hot water fish or a warm water fish. We'll say. Right. <clears throat> but they'll spawn all the way into the summer some, sometimes. But they spawn at the same time. Uh, so that's something to, to keep in mind too. Is go out there and, and smoke a, a bunch of those. And, uh, and a good tilapia. thing is, is if you see tilapia beds, well, you know bass are going to be bedding there too. Yeah, because it's sand bottom. Yeah, I caught so. some. I was in an area last year <clears throat> that I was recently checking. Didn't see any beds there yet, but uh, I was casting among multiple beds, and uh, I caught a four or five pounder. And it's like, man, I could see these beds from about 30 feet away. I kept fishing and not getting any other bites. And I went up there after I fished them all yeah. and found out half of them or more were tilapia well, beds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the thing about a tilapia, too, the reason you want to get rid of them, because I mean, these things are eight, Huge. nine pounds, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. State record, I think, is right at 10. But they're so big and their tails are so big, they're sitting there fanning and they're blowing everything out from around it. You know, you got mm -hmm. a bass bed next to a tilapia bed, man, all them little dry and the eggs everything just yes gets whipped around my so. son shot two last summer at nighttime um, that were over 10 pounds and I actually called FWC to see if he had broke the state record yeah. and they don't they don't acknowledge oh yeah with a bow it oh, has to be oh, it has oh, to be called on a rod okay. and reel yeah yeah so it's so uh, they do get big we do want to get rid of them so yes mm -hmm. if you want come to see these guys participate and help out <laughs> in that front yeah give them yeah. a call we'll get you out there on some tilapia as well as uh fresh salt water too for flounder and sheep's head that's coming up right oh, now yeah. it's that time of year so we'll get into that here in a little bit so killer information there jerry that's really good stuff and dan on the uh you know really breaking that down so at this point we're going to go ahead and jump over to okay folks we got a brand new sponsor blue cypress lake cabins out at blue oh, cypress right. lake great place to stay yes these cabins are really really nice they're right on the water you've got a canal behind you you've got a great comfortable porch out back which is really nice for hanging out on the evening time yep. you pull your boat up right to the dock behind you so you can shoot out bright and early in the morning to get out and do some fishing check them out their information will be below yep. as well Ooh. You're going to talk, uh, about talk a bit about punching, punching? flipping, pitching, punching. A little demo and talking stuff, yeah. baits and stuff, right on. So on one of the previous videos that we recorded, mm -hmm. I spoke to two guys at the ramp right when we got done filming, and they were two saltwater guys that were coming in to uh, fish freshwater. Mm -hmm. And, it, and they, the guy's like, man, I appreciate, you know, talking about different things. He's like, can you talk about some different techniques and rigs and things to let us know what to do because these guys are experienced fishermen they're mm -hmm. offshore guys they've grew, grown up on the river here saltwater fishing yep. but that's a different animal out there the, the, running the marsh learning to fish so uh, nothing that i say is set in stone is the way it's got to be but this is what i do um, so for for punching and when i say punching flipping pitching uh, think of the the floated mats of vegetation. So we have hydrilla. You know, yeah. So we got matted hydrilla, which is basically a subsurface vegetation that comes to the top. Then we have the emergent vegetation, in which mats like the uh, water hyacinth and water lettuce yes. will blow into and then continue to grow. There's a lot of floating islands mm -hmm. as well at headwaters right now, which have beautiful yellow flowers on a lot of them. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's really cool. Um, so what happens is, is this, it makes like a roof for the fish, similar to what we have here. And these fish, they'll sit under these mats, and, I, and most of you guys know this. Um, I'm going to touch here for a second. Okay. For the offshore guys, think about dolphin fishing. Under weed lines. Blow on weed lines and pallets and whatever. Mm -hmm. Anything they can find to get out of that yep, sun. Get out, boom, it's yep. the same principle yep, similar stuff we're yeah. just going to attack it just a little bit different yeah offshore it's like the bait you know that's yep. what provides the bait the small bait yep. fish and that happens similarly in in freshwater too it's just what we have here mm -hmm. in florida of a lot of floating vegetation well you can't necessarily make a cast to catch them so you got to get through the mat yep and which most guys know is going to be a uh, big one ounce or more uh, tungsten. Yep. tungsten weight 
Uh, this happens to be a one ounce. Uh, I'll go up to one and a half, and sometimes if you have to, uh, you can go up to two ounce. Man, you you really work yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's if it, you need a two ounce, that's some pretty thick stuff. So <coughs> some things to keep in mind when you're punching. I and I'm talking specifically punching heavy mats. Is I like a very compact bait. This happens to be uh, a little craw. Notice it doesn't have a long curly tail. It's not really long in length. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what happens when you say you want to fish a big 8 inch worm in a mat is that mat sticks to some of these waxy leaves like the water hyzen a very waxy uh, leaf and it sticks and it makes it hard to get through. So I like a very compact bait to, uh, to, to punch through these mats. Uh, some keys for that, that you, what you need to do. The stuff like if Dave and I were talking about pompano fishing or trout fishing, redfish, you can fish eight, 10 pound line in the river. Yep. And you can do that under a mat, but you're gonna lose a lot of tackle and a lot of fish. I use uh, 50 to 65 pound braid, which is kind of a known thing, that's what everybody uses. The reason you use something like this, there's, this is just my opinion, which I know it's correct, but I don't think there's a bass alive that can physically swim and break 65-pound nope. line pulling. Nope. The reason that you need this heavy stuff is because you're going to make multiple, maybe hundreds of presentations a day if you're really focused on punching and flipping. So this line is constantly rubbing on vegetation, sawing on vegetation every, you know, every time you drop it in there. So heavy braid, heavy, heavy gauge hook, so this is an extra wide gat gamagatsu. I think this one has to be a three aught. It's a super line hook. Okay. Also, I uh, I don't break a rod. <laughs> Wait a minute, hang on. What size uh, rod do you like to use for I'll, flipping? I'll get to that. I'll get to it. When? Momentarily. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an offset wide gap hook. A lot of guys, and I do too, mm -hmm. use a J hook, which I'm sure Dave's going to get some close-ups of these things. And not only do they use a J hook, they snell the hook. Mm -hmm. So snelling, you can find multiple videos on YouTube to do that. Maybe one day we can do one of these videos. The, the reason you would snell is you actually run the line through the eye of the hook and then tie around the shank of the hook. So, so when you when you get a bite and you set the hook, this whole thing is in the fish's mouth. When you set the hook, notice what the hook does. It pops up because you went through the eye of the hook and tied around the shank. So it offers a, a better way of actually getting a, a hook set because it changes the angle of the hook. Right. Also, uh, the old school way of flipping, or excuse me, pegging a weight would be a, a toothpick. Yes. <laughs> so now what we do is we have a bobber stopper. You can get these in any tackle shop. Yep. You put that on your line first, and that stops your weight from sliding up your line. Can you show that again, Jerry? Jerry? Yeah. I was going to let that slide. I was going to let it slide, Dave. <laughs> I know we're almost the same height. So we don't look anything like <laughs> We're almost the same size, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> Not really. So, there we go. You see the bobber stopper? One ounce weight. Big, heavy gauge, heavy wire hook. Show. Sure. And uh, people uh, ask, and people ask me, why would you use a 50-pound braid? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. you think on a six-pound or an eight-pound fish, why would you need that? Because when you hook that fish, that fish is you're already in vegetation. So once you hook that fish, and that fish just swims, and you just bring up this five-gallon bucket of lettuce with it, yeah. I mean, you know, if you just got 10, 12, 15-pound test line you're going to be upset camper at the end of the day yep. yeah you'll, you'll lose a lot of tackle and something else that really makes a big difference um like this i have 65 pound braid i'm on the guide program with Cortland, and if you guys haven't checked out their silent flip it's the some it's a 16 carrier braid and it is super smooth and you know that sawing sound you get when you're punching and zip 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 you don't get that with this and it just flows right off the who body. makes that it's Cortland. Cortland's more known for their fly fishing tackle okay but they have fantastic braid yep. so that's just a little thing to put in there for you guys so a little thank you to Cortland. i might have yep. to buy some of that yeah it's good yep. stuff it's good stuff uh, one other thing that, to keep in mind uh, and then we'll get i'll get to the rod and try to shorten up finish up um, when you have the heavy braid you end up hung up a lot because you're banging around with these soft plastics and, and the tip of your hook pops out mm -hmm. and you're going to be hung up so yeah. what you do 
uh, in that situation when you're hung up instead of pulling let me see if I can get oh, my go ahead rod and just yeah, grab that just there, Jerry. Just, just, let me grab that right. real quick. Let's just, just pitch hook, it over there and I'll see if I can. Lip real quick. We'll, we'll take care of it later. Okay. And let's so, <laughs> so now you're hung in the lattice. Show I mean the there. lettuce. Or is it <laughs> lattice? You're in, you're in the lattice today. Yeah, you're hung in the lattice. So you're hung in the grass. Oh my goodness. We're going to pretend this is grass, folks, just in case. Because Dave's still filming that. Are you going to like rip that off of there? I'm going to try not to break it. I could probably break that <laughs> lattice. I'll rip that right off of there. I don't think the Davis House in folks would like me too much tearing up their uh, deck out here. Look like you've already been here practicing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 65 pound braid is some strong stuff. And another good reason to have this heavy braid is you're going to be hung up. It's just the way it is. You're going to be hung up. Yeah. So the way you get that out is not by putting a big bend in your rod. Here he comes. All right, none of this big bend in the rod. Okay, guys, mm -mm. can you see that, Dave? We don't want a big bend in the rod because it acts as a slingshot. And it's, you're gonna really be working to get it to, to get it loose. So the best way to do it is point your rod at it, reel it. You're gonna thumb your spool of your rod and I call it a dead pull. I don't know what it's really called. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you thumb your spool real hard and you pull straight on it and it'll rip, uh, it'll rip loose out of the grass basically yep. every time. Uh, you can straighten out a, a Gamagatsu super line hook before you break that six, line. 65 pound braid. Yeah, so that, that is a tip for that. Now, rod selection. Um, I'm gonna get that for you, Dan. Yeah, do that. Don't make it feel like a bite of mites of the hook. <laughs> Sorry, just off. Oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. Muscle memory. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, of course, rigging up. Of course, it's weedless. But rod selection. Uh, I like at least a seven and a half foot rod. You're going to need a a, uh, a heavy action rod uh, because you're going to have to be pulling on, tussling with some, you know, hopefully some big, really big fish. Um, anywhere from seven and a half to eight foot rod. You need stout tackle, guys. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with uh, different kinds of rods. Like you can throw a spinner bait on a worm rod, and uh, so I'm not trying to get these young guys who are just getting started. You don't have to go out and buy two thousand dollars worth of tackle. But if you're going to punch, you need the right equipment. Specific for rod it. for that. Yeah, you can get another. You can use some of your other rods for throwing, like your top water and crankbait rods. Can be the same thing if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but a designated flipping punching rod. Is, uh, is now the when, way to go. Now, when she hits that, Dan, is it just, just a thump? Or sometimes she just pull and you can just feel the line pulling when that fish hits that. Each, each bite can sometimes be different. different. Uh, you know, uh, and we had talk, we're talking about maybe doing a video, on the water video of doing some punching. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's just a, a subtle bite, just a, a tap. Sometimes you don't feel them and it's just you, you start to lift. And you feel that little bit and of And you pull. notice I didn't say hop, I said yeah. lift. And you feel, you just feel weight. So what you do, don't keep pulling. You wait and, uh, what I do is I wait and see if it moves. Yes. If it ever moves, that's not you, that's a fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything that anything that you don't make it do is a fish. They don't have hands, they don't. Yeah. Water lettuce doesn't with. doesn't move. Yeah. yeah Cabbage right. doesn't move. Yeah, none of that moves. Yeah, and then, then a, you know, a big hook set uh, because your line may be down over and through. Sometimes a fish will, <laughs> if they're really aggressive that day, a lot of times they'll bite it and they'll try to swim out from under the mat. So I've hooked them from here to the, or I pitched or flipped 10, 15 foot away, and they're almost under the boat sometimes. You set the hook, you see the fish flashing down here, wow. like, uh-oh, you know, then you gotta pick up the line. I also like a higher gear ratio <laughs> reel, so I, you know, with my pitching, I can pitch and, and or flip. I use a combination of flipping and pitching at the same time. Then I can pick it up and do it again really quickly. All you know? my years of fishing, so. this is one thing that I've never <clears throat> done hardly any of. Yeah. It, so it's I'm going to get with you. We're going to go. It'll work on Kenosville. You're talking about fishing those mats with shines. I'm thinking, ooh, you can go punch mm -hmm. them too. Well, we're going to go. Well, you're going to teach me how to do this because uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. my kind it's, of deal right a, there. It's fun. I've spent hours doing this in tournaments and sometimes uh, you're just worn out at the end of the day and you did okay. And other times, you got five, you know, 20 pounds with your best five or more. You can catch some big fish punching, and uh, it's, it's a, a whole lot of fun. A whole lot yeah. of fun. I enjoy it. For sure. All righty. Good deal. All right. Dave, once you jump back in here, let's talk a little bit about stuff. 
stuff and things. Well, I talk about stuff. <laughs> Get it out. We, we talk about we talk about blue cypress, but you might have a trouble with blue. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't working. So All right, let's talk about let's uh, talk a little bit about guiding. Who's doing what? What are we doing? What are, you know? One of the, I, I was preface yeah. that by saying there's a lot of things that we do here with hooked on headwaters that you may or may not be aware of. So we're going to just kind of quickly go through all the different things that we can help accommodate you with. If you're coming down from up north, you're local and you want right. to do something different, mm -hmm. just to make sure that everybody's aware of exactly what all the things we do. Yeah. So we've got, a, a, I'll call it a family of guides um, in the hooked, under the hooked on headwaters umbrella, if you will. We've got these two fabulous guys. They're long life residents, residents of this area. Um, they live in, in breathe that, that lake. They are um, adapt to all the different conditions and how to fish them and how to get them. Um, and we and a variety of platforms, a bass boat, a bay boat, boat and air boats. Boat. Um, you've got a kayaking, living water kayaking. That's what I do. I do from here. As a matter of fact, this is one of my launch sites, um, Davis House Inn. We launch right from back there, really quick and easy. Just put the kayaks, slip the kayaks right down by that dock and off we go. There's some great fishing by these islands. We also have, <laughs> bow fishing so this is a, a variety of things that we offer so if you come to this area you can plan your day in and around the water mm -hmm. um, by yourself fishing you can include your family you can include your wife so um, check us out yep um, so yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah and just to be clear all right so Jerry handles <clears throat> I do bass fishing obviously out of my airboat right but I also have a brand new flats boat right so I do bass fishing trips out of it artificial and shiner fishing um out of the flats boat in the airboat so you um, cover, stick, I, so you cover stick, marsh, stick marsh farm 13 kennensville and headwaters and headwaters obviously yep. and garcia's yeah yep. and garcia's yep yeah. mm -hmm. and then on our side we cover the bow fishing for salt water fresh water we do also if you're somebody right. who's just moved into the area and you're like hey i really like to learn headwaters we do kind of like guided runs around headwaters if you just want to take and just plot a whole bunch of marks on your your depth yep. finders run you around show you the deep holes or show you different areas or show you how to navigate the lake um, things like that that's kind of important i know it can take there's a bit of a learning curve out there there so is people yeah. aren't sure what's what is there any hidden thing that you look out for so we do just really you know hands-on trips where we'll run you all around um, sightseeing if you just got you know three or four people that want to just go out see some alligators see the wildlife we do little short trips so those are kind of nice yeah. for family because they're only like an hour right. get you know out just run around just so you guys can get a look at the lake and, and speaking like of alligators so just this week i took a family member out they came down north and visited well he had never been up close to an alligator well <laughs> old, <laughs> the old we this there was this big boy he must have been three foot wide <laughs> must have been a 13 foot to 12 footer sunning himself along the banks there was able to get the boat near near to him he and smiled head, and, and we took water. a lot of pictures and headwaters <laughs> and headwaters yeah. so they're there so you want to do something along those lines yep. um, check us out a little eco tours and don't worry the gators can't get a boat they have no interest <laughs> in getting a boat they don't wet. we're not their food so don't worry and i do and i do also offer two and three people airboat rides i mean yep. if you the small parties i don't you know i don't have a boat where you can take 10 or 11 people but if you have you know a dad and two sons or a, or, yep. or a guy and his wife and a guy and his girlfriend or whatever you know and you want to do a two-hour boat ride or something like that i'll give you boat rides yep. in the airboat as well so talking about taking pictures uh, i also offer not only do i fish uh, i offer a, a garcia stick marsh uh headwaters and blue cypress but i also offer photography trips for photographers i'm not a big photographer i like doing it mm -hmm. but uh yeah there are a lot of people that don't like to fish Right. But I tell you what, guys, birds. you all know this. Birds. The birds are really just beautiful out there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds yeah. and headwaters yep. all over this area. Mm -hmm. Spoonbill, um, the pink spoonbills we yep. have that spoon made bills, here from January kites. to July. Yep. And, man, and they're getting to be more and more and more. And as yep. we get on into January, February, March, April, yep. the, the birds, uh, I'd say in the last month, the, the number of birds that I see out there have doubled. Mm -hmm. And I'd say they'll probably uh, double again yes. by probably April. We have a lot of nesting birds there. Uh, you can check out some of the photos that I took that aren't all great, but I like them on my website at fishhand.net for you photographers out there. And also something I was thinking about today. Guys, don't just ditch your family at home. Bring them, even if they don't like to fish, because right here, we got the Indian River behind us. 
from where we're sitting right now, it's 15 minutes to the beach. Yep. And if you're, you know, I had to, these guys come down from, say, Ohio, and uh, they're out there in shorts and a t-shirt, and it's cold. They're like, dude, I want to get some sun. Well, maybe your wife or, say, your daughter doesn't like to fish. Mm -hmm. We're literally, it's a 15-minute drive, and they're in the sand. So, uh, guys, step up and make arrangements for your family. We're supposed to lead. Uh, bring, bring your families. There's other things to do besides fish. Uh, walking distance of where we are right now, some great restaurants, some nightlife. Yeah. Uh, it just, there's got a, the crab right. stop right down oh, here. Man, Captain so Hiram's is right there's down so much here. To do. Yeah. And like yeah, Dan was saying, here. you're 15 minutes from the beach. From here, you're 15 minutes from the beach, but you're also 15 minutes from the lakes. 20 yeah. minutes yeah. from the lakes. Yeah. So I yeah, mean, right over our right shoulder is the Sebastian Inlet State Park. Yep. If you got uh, small kids, there's a, an area for the kids to swim. Yep. Uh, that's that's pretty safe. It's not deep water. It's you know knee deep. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do besides just mm -hmm. uh, beating up the bass waters. Yep. You know, you're right, and so. still be involved around water. Absolutely. Anything to add to that, there, Dave. Thanks to Doc. I, I did not include it in our last video. That's Just, why I uh, Too many things kind of going on. <laughs> but please submit your. We've got some already. We've got some. Videos. Yeah. This, this boy. Yeah. Here, I'm waiting. Really <laughs> nice bonks. If you've got those, can give us a quick, quick, quick story about the catch. Uh, location, if you got a story behind it, just submit those. This is for fun. It's kind of a virtual community board, bragging board, if you will. Just going to have fun with it. So yep. submit those. Send those in to, send them in to me, Dave, at hookedonheadwaters.com or Barry at hookedonheadwaters.com. Um, we also have, which I forgot to bring, my fault, my bad, uh, um, our blue Hooked on Headwaters performance shirts. We are clearing out the blues. We're getting a new order. So if you're interested in those, uh, the blue, the light blue performance hooked on headwater shirt, hit us up. They're 25 bucks. We've got to ship it to you. It might be a small charge to cover shipping, but we'll make a great um, Christmas present. We do have a batch coming in of the white. We haven't received it just yet, but we'll let you know. Um, they should be in here. And they should be here in time for Christmas. Yep, should be. So just hit us up if you're interested. Um, Hit up Dave, man, it doesn't matter. Let us know what size, how many you want, and uh, we'll work it out from there. Yep. All right. That it now? That's it now. <laughs> we don't have to string them along anymore. No. We can, they, they're allowed let to go check. now. Yeah. Let me check. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right, guys, we're not going to keep you any longer, but we're looking for you, forward to you coming back next week. So make sure, again, you hit the subscription, hit the uh, subscribe notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos. We got a lot of really cool content coming up. These guys got so much cool things that they're, they're, their brains are like this all the time. They're like mine and Dave's, yeah. you know, so we're always thinking of new <laughs> stuff. So we got really cool yeah, yeah. Uh, videos that we'll be putting out over this coming next couple months. Um, you know, thumbs up the videos, helps with the algorithm, keeps us rolling, see it's easy to find. And uh, we really appreciate each and every one of you. So with that, I'm saying goodbye until next week. So long, everyone. Bye-bye. See you on the water. God bless. <laughs>